Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Dog Gut Health Summit, day number one. If you are joining us here live, I would love to hear from you in the comment section. Drop where you're joining me from and what you're most excited about for the Dog Gut Health Summit. For those of you who do not know me, I am Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor. I'm an integrative holistic veterinarian, and I'm so excited to be the host of the Dog Gut Health Summit. So drop in the comments. I want to shout you out because you are taking the time to learn more about your dogs, how you can optimize their health and how you can be the best pet parent possible. You guys are amazing. Dee, I see you from Portland, Maine. Thank you for being here live. Now, first off, we're gonna be going through your questions. So if you have questions about some of the topics that were covered, or you have a pet that has some gut health things going on, or you're just not quite sure, drop those in the comment too, because I am here for you guys tonight. And we're gonna be doing these live Q and A's all week long through Thursday through day four of the summit. Hi, Lindy. I see you from Virginia. Lash Monster, I see you from Connecticut. Thank you so much for joining. Now, here's the thing. I need to give a shout out to some of our awesome sponsors. If you guys have not checked out their websites, their products, their testing, their food, I highly, highly recommend going to their websites. Uh, we've already dropped those links in the comment section for you to check out. But Farah Pet Organics, I love their supplement line, highly recommend them. I use them for my own clients, my patients, and even my own pets. So definitely check out Fair Pet Organics. Also, Chi Dog by Dr. Susan Bower. She's amazing. I did. We kicked off the summit last night with our interview with Dr. Susan, her recipes and food therapy. She even talked a little bit. We're going to be talking about her discussion that was on day one today. So highly recommend food therapy for healing those gut health issues. Using the energetics of food to really help heal your pets can be a transformational thing for your dogs if you're feeling stuck. So definitely check out Chi Dog. And then also, last but not least, is my dear friends at Innovative Pet Lab. They are doing some really neat gut health tests so make sure you check them out. Also, they do stool tests. So you can order this from the comfort of your home. You can send in the sample. You can get a better idea if your dog is dealing with leaky gut, if there's inflammation, if they're not digesting their food properly. These tests have changed the results I get for my patients who have gut health problems. So definitely check out our three sponsors. They're all companies that I love, recommend, and use personally and use for my clients. So definitely check them out. And hi, Paula, I just wanted to shout you out. Hi, Amanda, great to see you here. So those are a couple of our sponsors that are helping us put on this amazing Dog Gut Health Summit this week. Uh, so once again, share that information with other dog parents too, so that they know and know what to use and how to dive deeper into their dog's potential gut health problems. Also too, if you're finding this content valuable, remember it's only day one. Who here's already learned something new? Drop in the comments, number one, if you've learned something new, just the number one, if you've learned something new that you didn't know before joining this Gut Health Summit. So drop the number one. I'd love to hear who's learned something new already on just the first day. Now, if you're finding it valuable, awesome bookie, Paula, love you guys. Thank you. I love that. Thank you, Susan. Perfect. Perfect. Love you guys. Lindy, Amanda, Ima, Stacy. Fantastic. Look at all those ones. Learning something new. Can you imagine what the next three days are going to show us? So if you're finding it valuable and you want lifetime access to the content, plus all the discounted bonuses that come, you can still, still subscribe to that premium package. The price is going to go up to $129 after the summit ends. So I just wanted to put that reminder out there. If you're finding it really valuable, you're going to have access to each day for 48 hours. So keep that in mind. Try to get it in. But if you're like super busy, like so many pet parents are, make sure you grab the premium package. So definitely check that out. Also, too, at the end of the day, you're going to get an email with the links to the daily talks. So make sure you save that link so you can click right to it and watch all the talks there and make sure you share the summit with your friends because I see you guys. I see you, Stacy and Cheryl and Amanda. 
you're learning something new on day one, there are other pet parents out there who can benefit from this free information to help their pets. So please share this with other pet parents so we can spread the word and help people get unstuck, find the root cause and really heal those gut health issues. So wanted to share that information with you guys. Love that you're learning already. Once again, drop your questions in the comments about today's talks if you're dealing with a gut health issue. But I wanted to give a brief overview because who here has watched all of the talks? Drop a two if you've watched all the talks already because you're a rock star, by the way. But drop a two if you've watched all the talks. There is a lot of information and there's a lot of content that can unlock why your pet may be stuck. Susan, you're a rock star. She's got two. Lindy, look at you guys. You're amazing. This is why I love this group of pet parents. You're already on it. Fantastic. So the first talk that we had today was with Dr. Ava Frick. And she talked a lot about like the causes of bad digestion, an upset tummy, what causes that? And she talked about a few different things and a different way of approaching gut health, which is super fascinating. And she talked about a really neat tool called hair tissue mineral analysis tests. So who here really found Dr. Ava Frick's talk fascinating? And I know some of the pet parents here have done hair tissue tests because we've done them for, for you personally, which is fantastic. But these tests are really helpful at uncovering where your pet might be stuck in, say, like a sympathetic fight or flight response that doesn't allow them to shift into a healing response, which is that parasympathetic rest and digest phase. So this test can help uncover what's going on. And if your pet's really stuck in that fight or flight, and if we need to focus on calming down that immune system, we know the gut brain access is very strong, that connection between the gut and the brain through the vagus nerve. And if we can't get into a parasympathetic resting phase and stimulate that vagus nerve, your pet's not going to digest and break down their food as well. The other really key component of these tests that's really helpful that Dr. Ava talked about is identifying heavy metals. These can be the blocker for your pet healing. It could also be the reason why your pet's really anxious or hyperreactive or noise sensitive or really sensitive because when we increase inflammation in the body, we actually cannot detox because they have an inverse relationship. So when we know better because of some of these amazing tests, we can do better and start healing these frustrating gut health problems. So those tests can be done from any pet anywhere in the world. We do them at the Natural Pet Doctor. Dr. Frick also does them. There's a few other companies that also do them. But it's great because we just need a small fur sample. We send it to the lab and then we can create a a really intensive report to figure out where your pet might be stuck. So if you haven't watched Dr. Frick's talk, make sure you check it out because she goes into depth about how those tests work and how it connects and correlates to what might be keeping you stuck from figuring out why those supplements, why those food changes aren't working for your pet. Next, we heard from Dr. Barbara on how to identify when a dog has digestive and gut health problems. And so there can be some subtle signs of GI upset that are commonly missed. And there can be some really obvious ones like vomiting, diarrhea that are like, yes, my pet is having some digestive problems. And so we need to also look at their physical and behavioral well-being because a lot of times we have a gut health problem, as I was talking about, when we have behavior problems or we're having trouble training them. And it can come down to the microbiome. It can come down to heavy metals and toxins, increased inflammation, what we call brain on flat fire, neuroinflammation. And your dog's just like, I can't take commands. I can't do these things. Like I just feel crazy inside. And if we miss those subtle signs, we could end up essentially chasing our tails, chasing the wrong issue, right? This is where I'm not against using medications, especially anxiety medications if needed, 
But my first go-tos are to uncover the why. And Dr. Barbera talks beautifully about that pivotal role of diet, the environment, and really diving into those deeper components of that, what can really be happening inside your dog's gut health. And then we heard from Dr. Peter DeBias about the holistic approach to treating diarrhea in dogs. Who here has ever dealt with diarrhea in your dog? Give me a five in the comments if you've ever dealt with diarrhea with your dog. This is very, very common. You usually will, you're a rare unicorn if you've never dealt with diarrhea with your pets at any point, unless you're a brand new pet parent, then hopefully you haven't dealt with that. But yeah, I see you, Paula, Dee Dee, Susan, JK, My Yorkie Life, Lashmonster, Lashmonster, Ema, like this is super, super common. And unfortunately, a lot of times we're reaching or my conventional colleagues are reaching for drugs like metronidazole, and there are so many natural remedies and foods and bland diets that we can actually utilize first. So that way we're not upsetting the microbiome or creating more inflammation in the gut. So if you haven't watched Dr. Tobias's talk, make sure that you look at that because there's, there's a lot of information there on alternative resources that we can use, especially if we're dealing with an acute flare up of diarrhea. So we do our best to avoid those medications that can come with side effects, like the omeprazole can lead to issues, the antibiotics can lead to further issues. And yeah, it might work short term, but long term, we could be setting ourselves up for more layers of a problem that then we have to fix and peel back down the road, making it harder for you to actually achieve optimal health. Once again, he talked about that emotional connection between pets and us, which is a significant factor. And so I always talk about the emotional health pillar and being aware of, okay, how am I showing up for my pets? Am I supporting myself enough so that my pets aren't picking up on my stress? It's impossible to never feel stress, right? We live in a crazy world, but there's a lot of tools and techniques we can utilize that are free to help ourselves so we can help our dogs. So that way we're not keeping them stuck in a flared up state and diarrhea and vomiting, and they're not getting anywhere with healing. And then of course we had our beautiful talk from Dr. Ruth Roberts talking about food sensitivity testing to help develop a plan and how we heal leaky gut for dogs. Now leaky gut is when we get an inflamed gut lining and this can occur from toxins in the food, this can occur from stressors. So stress directly can cause leaky gut. Uh, if we're feeding the wrong diet, if the microbiome is off, if we have parasites, if we have heavy metals, there's a lot of reasons why we can end up with a leaky gut. Now, leaky gut is going to be one of the, the beginning factors of things like inflammatory bowel disease or other autoimmune disease. And with leaky gut, what happens is, is that we should have a nice, tight tight junctions. So our tight junctions are the things that are sealing the gut lining together, should be nice and tight. Food, bacteria, toxins should not pass through that from the gut inside to the external, which is our bloodstream where the immune system is sitting. Now, if we get inflammation, they start separating and we have spaces and holes and gaps. And this is what can lead to food sensitivities or having a really sensitive dog. So if you're like, you give something and your dog has blowout diarrhea or they have vomiting or they just don't tolerate things very well, they probably have a leaky gut, which increases their risk of food sensitivities. There are a lot of different food sensitivity tests out there on the market. Dr. Ruth talks about one of them. There are others that you can use too. So I always recommend working with an integrative veterinarian to figure out what the best path forward is. But then what we need to do is we need to follow a framework to heal that leaky gut. And there's that 5R approach where we're talking about removing, replacing, repairing, re-inoculating, and I talk about resetting and talking about that reset of that emotional health, your connection with your pet, resetting from that usually a sympathetic dominant state back into that gut healing state. So if you didn't catch that webinar, make sure you watch it because so many pet parents who have gut health issues in their dogs miss this framework. It is essential 
that you have to heal the gut lining. You have to heal the ecosystem of the gut. We have to think about the immune system and all the factors that go into that. Is our pet digesting? Are there detox pathways open? All of those pillars of health and following those frameworks are essential. So definitely go back and rewatch that because there's a lot of great nuggets in there that can help you. And then last but not least was Dr. Susan Bower. And she talked about food therapy to support GI health and decrease inflammation. And she talked about how to really customize the diet. So I practice Chinese food therapy also with my patients. And this is where we're tapping into the power of energetics and the constitution, the personality of our dog. And what's their baseline? Where are they at when they're in balance? And when they become out of balance, we can see certain symptoms. So with gut health issues, the spleen is digestion. The spleen doesn't like being cold. And it's also an area where it's going to help us generate energy or what we call qi in Chinese medicine. And different foods will have different warming properties, cooling properties, uh, whether they're supporting the generation of qi, whether they're supporting uh, helping if we're too dry and putting kind of essentially, I call it putting water back in the river, getting things flowing and moving through the body and the meridians from a Chinese medicine perspective. So there's a lot of power. And when we use food as the foundation, food is truly medicine. And when we tap into the power of energetics, it unlocks a lot to help your pets heal. So her overview is fantastic. She gives you a lot of tips and tools. She talks about the chi dog diets that are based off of food therapy principles. So if you can access those, I've had a lot of pets do really well with that. But you can also use the principle she talks about with the different types of foods based on what symptoms your pets may be showing. So I highly recommend that talk. So that's a general overview. There's so much information. I could fill this entire Q&A, but you are here to get your questions answered. So let's go through some of the questions that you have that might have come up or you might be dealing with so I can help further guide you along that path. So let's go to the first question. All right, Debbie, what are your thoughts on Amiprazole versus Slippery Elm Bark and other herbs for very black stools due to reaction from post-surgery medications? So these are very different. Now, omiprazole is going to be an antacid. So a lot of times people who are having acid reflux are going to take this to reduce the acid. Now, we know it should not be used as a long-term solution. Um, so it can actually create issues with vitamin B deficiencies, magnesium deficiencies, calcium deficiencies, zinc deficiencies that has been proven, studied and proven on the human side. So if your pet's on omiprazole for a long time, there's also an increased risk on the human side of esophageal cancer. So this is not meant to be used long term. It can be used short term. But my question is always, why are we having a potential acid reflux? In this situation, we probably had a gastric ulcer from non-steroidal use is what I'm guessing. Whenever we see black tarry stools after using something like a non-steroidal pain medication, that's a sign that we possibly have an upper gastrointestinal tract bleed, and it's the digested blood that makes it black. If we see fresh blood, it's usually from the lower part of the gastrointestinal system, the colon. So it gives us an idea on where there's inflammation or an imbalance. Now, omiprazole is reducing acid. Slippery elm is an herb that we call a mucilage. So what it does is it coats. It is very helpful for irritations in the GI tract, whether it's for diarrhea, acid reflux, healing ulcerations. It works very similar to marshmallow root. Those are both mucilages. And so this is definitely something that I would use that first in a situation like this. Now, I don't have the full full situation, of course. I don't have all the blood work or what happened. But Slippery Elm is a great, safe, go-to option to help heal inflammation in the GI tract. And it can be used long term. If you're using it long term, usually you're going to give it at least 30 minutes prior to the main meal because there is some possible concern that it could block absorption of the nutrients from the food because it's essentially forming a Band-Aid on the stomach lining, the GI tract. So if you're using it long term, just space it away from the main meals. So definitely Slippery Elm is my go-to in a situation like that. 
We may need to do other things to heal leaky gut. I would refer back to Ruth Roberts talk, looking at those frameworks, the five R's, and then also too, this is where innovative pet lab tests can be really helpful too. Make sure we've cleared up the inflammation. They test calprotectin, which is going to be identifying whether you have inflammation in the gut from that stool test. So I highly recommend looking into those stool tests to make sure that there's no residual or lingering inflammation. So I hope that helps you, Debbie. All right, next question. All right, Debbie. Recommendations for a gentle cleanse. Currently, we have used Dr. Tobias's products, but she does experience a bit of bloating with this product. So whenever I see there's there's a couple different ways to approach detoxification. And a lot of times we're, we're not doing it, I don't want to say properly, but we're missing certain phases of detoxification. Now, there are a lot of great detox supplements out there but I find that a lot of them don't use a strong enough binder, which is phase three. So when we talk about phase one, phase two, phase three detoxification, there's different phases on how the body processes toxins. So first phase is actually gonna turn a fat soluble toxin into something more toxic in the liver. And so then it goes through phase two in the liver, it makes it water soluble, and then it can be expelled out of the body through the kidneys, through the gut. So if the gut's not working well, and we have things like leaky gut, if the kidneys aren't working well, if we have some kidney insufficiency, we need to make sure that we're binding to it. So phase three. So if we're seeing like bloat, or you give something like a detox supplement, and you see increased like itchiness or inflammation or GI upset, that to me tells me that we probably have an issue with some portion of our detox pathways. And a simple way to trial this is support phase three, because a lot of times that will clear that up. Phase three is when we use binders. These can be things like activated charcoal is a really strong one, so it binds to everything. We also have different types of clays. We have humic fulvic acid, different zeolites. They're all going to have different binding affinities for toxins. But what they're going to do is as the liver is processing these and pushing it out through the bile into the GI tract, we want to make sure something's there to capture it. Because what can happen if we're a little bit off, things are a little bit inflamed, the digestive tract is a little bit sluggish, those toxins can actually be recirculated through the portal vein that goes right back to the liver. So we don't want that to happen. And this is also where making sure that we have a, a balanced diet over time, long term, and we're getting the right nutrients and vitamins from a wide variety of foods is very helpful and important because those nutrients are cofactors. They're required needs for those different pathways of detoxification. So if we're missing something, say like milk thistle or your methionine or taurine, certain phases won't work well. So that's really important that we are getting a very diet. You're going to hear a lot of the presenters talk about that. And in the interviews, very important. But I'd be looking at if we're not using a binder, then adding in something like RX clay, adding in if you can only access activated charcoal, great. The stool will be black, just FYI. So keep that in mind. But using that for a little bit of time away from the main meal, because once again, it'll bind to everything and then see how that does. If that's not working. There's a sign something else is off. It could be the bile. It could be digestion. It could be something else. Uh, but that's typically how I approach detoxification. All right, next question. Amanda, how can you add diversity in the microbiome without fecal transplant pills? Great question. So this is where we have to look at the other pillars of health because your fecal transplant pills, so this is from Animal Biome in the States, where we're essentially taking the wide variety of microbes that make up the microbiome. So our microbiome is made up of trillions of different types of microorganisms from fungi, bacteria, protozoa. They should all be working together. And what can happen with a lot of pets is that we lose diversity. We can have an overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria. But the other thing too, and this is where those five R's are really important for healing, is that we need to make sure that we're reducing inflammation, that that ecosystem is happy and healthy and is set up for when we do put those healthy microbes back into the gut, that they're actually going to stay and do what they're supposed to and then get things back on track. 
So if you think about essentially where we can use other options, like we have healed leaky gut, we have healed gut health issues before there were like fecal transplants. And it comes down to making sure we're healing leaky gut we're removing toxins, we're increasing the resilience of your dog in all those areas, we're supporting detoxification. And so this is also where we can use fermented foods. A lot of times our dogs are lacking diversity because they don't have food to feed the microbiome. So these are things like your prebiotics. I talk about this. I think a lot of other uh, speakers also talk about your prebiotics the, that's talked about tomorrow with the gut microbiome focus, but I talk about it in my presentation of healing skin through the gut with your different sources of prebiotics. Prebiotics are the food source, and this is really important. It's not taken in by your dog. It's essentially for the microbiome and the good beneficial bugs. So this is where fiber is really, really important. And there's a lot of fermented products out there now, fermented green products that you can use. Uh, you can also make your own. This is where fermented foods are helpful. Your kefir products, using raw goat's milk if your pet can tolerate it. And then there is a lot of controversy around probiotics. Probiotics can be used if we're using good brands that do the testing. But we also have to make sure that we're following the framework to actually heal that environment. That is really, really important and something that gets missed. So definitely go back through Ruth Roberts, make sure you're ticking off those boxes because there's something that's being missed. Um, and if your pet's really, if you do have a sensitivity to the gut restore capsules, then you just go slower with it, but you need to do the other things too. Just giving the gut restore capsules, I find with a lot of my patients, it's not enough anymore. And a lot of times there can be an element of stress in the household that's keeping your pet like with a leaky gut that also needs to be addressed. And a lot of times it comes down to us. And that's something that is so easily missed and something we don't want to touch on too, because it can be really difficult. This is why I talk a lot about teas, because using chamomile tea or calming teas or lavender will help us to calm us, ashwagandha is another great one. And we can use these adaptogenic herbs for ourselves to bring a sense of peace, but we can also utilize the power of those two with our pets to make sure stress isn't a component also. So I hope that helps, Amanda. All right, next question. Buki, what is your opinion on the use of hydrated calcium aluminosilicate kit? Clay for treating acute canine diarrhea. So I just mentioned this, RX clay is what utilizes that type of clay. Um, it definitely has a place for absorbing toxins. So this plays into the whole, why are we using something? We can better, when we better understand why we're using a supplement, it makes more sense. So if we have acute diarrhea or we're seeing bloody diarrhea, we know there's a lot of inflammation in that gut. And this is where we want to use binders to bind to those toxins to get it out of the body. So it doesn't get recirculated or sit there and create more inflammation and lead to more leaky gut. And then the immune system, because it's so intimately connected with the gut lining, gets more aggravated. And then we end up with more hot spots, itchiness, itchy skin, ear infections, all the things that are connected to gut health. So I love using binders. And that is just one example of a type of binder that you can use. Great. Next question. Susan, learning so much. Thank you. Where can we go to find out how much fresh food to feed daily? Well, this will depend, Susan, on what type of foods you're feeding because they're all going to have a different energy content. So this is where there's a lot of great resources, free resources too, that share. We have a free resource with the Dog Gut Health Summit. So downloading the simple guide to improving your pet's food will give you those resources also. Um, so there's a section at the end of it where you can go to people, like I list out all sorts of resources where it could help you formulate diets, uh, brands, there's some fresh food recipes that are also balanced. So definitely check that out because there's a lot of resources there to help guide you, keeping in mind, we each food is going to be different. So uh, I would highly recommend using some of those resources. All right, next question. JK, love a summit. Fantastic. Love hearing that. Thanks for that. 
And a little dog with gastroenteropathy from using metronidazole has been yet one year working to help him out. Would love to hear more about how to reverse the damage. So everything we're talking about, JK, I would definitely make sure you're following that framework for healing the gut, making sure we're not missing other factors like the emotional health side. I would also too, I'm not sure what tests have been done. Um, so making sure I talk a lot about gut health tests that I recommend for like skin issues, but also gut issues. So highly recommend checking out those talks. Um, these tests are going to help uncover where there are deficiencies or imbalances or layers that we need to peel back. So the hair tissue tests are really powerful at helping with that. Also to your innovative pet lab tests are really helpful with that. There are GI panels your veterinarian can run. There's microbiome tests that you can run through animal biome. They're all going to give you different pieces to the puzzle. So then you know what to use to heal the body. I find a lot of pet parents are taking spaghetti, throwing it at the wall, hoping it sticks. And you're like, this isn't working. It might work a little bit. And then weeks or even months down the road, you're back to square one or you've even slid, slid further down, down the hill. Has anyone been there? Like, this is part of my journey. I found this path because of my husband who developed inflammatory bowel disease and led me to a uh, integrative holistic approach. And then I was like, we should do this for pets, of course. So this is really important. Once again, that testing is going to uncover things and help make the healing journey. It's a journey. It's been a year. We do not expect overnight results. There is going to be time that it takes to help heal the damage, open up those detox pathways, heal the leaky gut, support the microbiome. And we want to be following a framework rather than just throwing supplements at it, hoping they work. Hope that helps. Next question. Paula, what are some go-to foods or supplements we can give our pets when they're on antibiotics to support the gut? Okay, this is a great question. This is where, so we know antibiotics. I am not against conventional drugs. There is a time and a place where we need to use them. I always say, if I ever get hit by a car, this is not the time for acupuncture. I love acupuncture, but please take me to the ER. I probably will want some pain medications, right? And I might need some surgery for broken bones. I don't know. But this is also where antibiotics have a time and a place. So if we've used antibiotics or we're using a course of antibiotics, Saccharomyces boulardii, which is a beneficial yeast, is really helpful and has a lot of studies around it where we can utilize that with the antibiotics to help minimize the damage that can occur. Now, we have to be a little bit careful. There are some studies that show that if we are giving other types of probiotics, with antibiotics, it can actually create dysbiosis. So what that means is that we can actually increase bad bacteria and decrease good bacteria. There are some studies on the human side. Dr. Zach Bush does a lot of this research where he shows that probiotics can potentially freeze the gut microbiome. So we need to be careful. This is not for any pet here. It is not the time and place to just use one type of probiotic if you're using probiotics and we use that forever. We do not want to do that. We want to stop. We want to use variety if you are using them. But Saccharomyces boulardii is my go-to for that. So that would be my number one choice for that. And then see how you go, depending on your pet. Each pet will be a little bit different depending on what's going on. But that one is pretty well tolerated by a lot of dogs. And you can use the human version. So, all right, next question. I would like to feed my dog a raw food diet, but when I do, his stools get very loose. Is there something I can do for this? So there's a lot of different types of raw food. So this is also something where when I hear raw food, I always think, what type of raw food are we feeding? Is this a 80-10-10 ratio diet? Is this just like a raw meat diet? Is this a balanced commercial pre-made diet? So there's a lot of different things that come into play with nutrition, which makes things super complicating, right? For a lot of pet parents, especially if you're getting like, this is the beginning of your journey into like fresh, like minimally processed pet food. So I would first want to know those factors. That's really important because if it's unbalanced or it doesn't have enough calcium, then yes, we are prone to having very loose stool because calcium is going to help firm up the stool. And it's also essential for optimal health. And it's commonly deficient, especially with a lot of homemade raw diets. Now, if we're using, say, like a commercial pre-made raw from some of the like 
good brands that we know. Once again, there's brands in our free guide that you have access to through the, the summit on nutrition. Then we'd, I'd be looking at what's going on with the gut. Is we have some in issue? Is there a food sensitivity? Do we need to do an elimination diet trial using a protein source that we've never used? Do we have a dog that's older and the digestive power is diminished and they don't have enough digestive enzymes or those food, the raw food energetically is very cooling? Once again, the spleen from a food therapy perspective does not like to be cold and that can actually create diarrhea. So if we have a lot of stress and inflammation and the GI tract is not strong, a raw food diet can actually make things worse. And this is where using a lightly cooked fresh food diet could be very helpful as you're healing the gut following those five R principles. So that's really, really important to think about. It gives us information. And also, too, you can do testing um, if you're able to access some of the and you're able to do those types of tests. Um, but otherwise, I'd be looking at elimination diet, lightly cooking the food, um, or using a pre-made lightly cooked, like Chi Dog is a great option that you could always use. All right, next question. What do you recommend as the best water and food dishes to use for our dogs in order to avoid plastic and heavy metals? I love mine, like as in this is mine, M-I-N-E, pet platters, if you can access that. It is based around food science and how our pets prefer to eat. You can use them for your dogs, your cats. I use them for my three cats. Um, it's a flat plate and it's also, it doesn't have the chemicals or toxins. It's very easy to use. But a lot of times those food bowls um, are a source of contaminants. Uh, stainless steel or ceramic, if you have to use that, would be my go-tos if you are using bowls. But I definitely would be looking at if you can get the mind pet platters. My cat agrees as he joins us. Um, that would be something I would definitely look into because they there's a lot of science behind it on how to improve, optimize, and really support them through uh, nature, essentially. All right, next. Pamela, is there a way to get the fur mineral, mineral test through you or one of the other vets? I don't have a holistic vet in my area. Yes, you can go to the naturalpetdoctor.com. We run those for pet parents across the world. I love these because fur, there's usually no custom issues with getting a fur sample. Uh, Dr. Frick also runs them. There's a couple other companies that run hair tissue tests too. We create, or I create, a 16-page report that details supplements, food therapy recommendations, and also details what does this mean? Um, so based on what's going on with your pet or making sure like if you're taking a proactive approach, what's going on, all we need is about a tablespoon of fur, but it's at our website, thenaturalpetdoctor.com, and you can order it directly from there. Um, they take about two to three weeks to get test results back from the lab, and then I create the report for you. Um, so if you have questions about those, feel free to reach out, but they're really, really powerful as you heard Dr. Frick talk about today. Next question. My Yorkie life. When every holistic integrative supplement introduction meant to begin the healing process gives the dog colitis, might some of that be because it is ridding the body of the issue? It depends. So this is where I work with a lot of really sensitive pets. Um, usually when people find me, it's like five, six, seven, sometimes 13 vets in. Um, so I have a lot of information at my hands. But also, too, I look at, well, what supplements are we using? There are a lot of supplements out there. And also, too, what's going on with the pet? Let's dive a bit deeper into the why and figure out what tests have we done. Because this is this may be the time where we haven't done a specific test to uncover certain imbalances that could be impairing the body from actually healing. And that's why your pet's really, really sensitive. And also, too, a really sensitive pet is not meant to have the dosage on the bottle. And sometimes we need to use higher dosages, but not for a sensitive pet. So we usually titrate up. We start at a very low dose. If we need to run certain tests, this is where like hair tissue tests are really helpful. And we work our way up based on that pet. I am not a fan of reactions. That is a detox reaction. A Herxheimer reaction is what we call that. And that tells me that your detox pathways are not open and we have a problem. So that's what I see when I see patients, pets having those types of reactions and we need to go slower. The journey's gonna be a bit longer. So we definitely need some patience 
but we need to uncover some of the other reasons and then go very slowly. So it can be a little bit frustrating at times, but this is where I always say, I hold the urgency for both of us. I need you to hold the patience for both of us. So keep that in mind. There is a reason. There is a reason you have to find it. And once again, using frameworks and adjusting based on the individual pet um, is how we, or how I approach that. There is a way forward and it, can take time depending on how long that pet, like how long your pet has been sick. All right, next question. Uh, my Yorkie life, how long do you allow the colitis before you say, okay, that's enough for now and have to take a step back on that supplement? Or This is where each pet is different and why I recommend working with an integrative vet that understands like why they're using something because this will also depend on what's going on and how your pet is feeling, how they're doing. Uh, if we're having bloody diarrhea, that is not sustainable for a long period of time. If that pet is acting sick, they're lethargic, they're really tired, they're not wanting to eat, we're losing water, we're getting dehydrated, that is not a good situation to be in. And that's where having a vet to partner with can really help guide you. So I do recommend partnering with a veterinarian that helps to guide you because that's not a good situation to be in. All right, Shep Aussie, what do you recommend to stop diarrhea or very soft stools and also to destroy worms a pup or dog has? Okay, so first off, stop diarrhea or soft stools. There are so many reasons why. Um, so we need to be looking at why. Is this an acute thing? Is this a chronic thing? Are we seeing? And also, two, I need to, we, we want to reframe. So we, if we have intestinal parasites, have we actually diagnosed them? The, I don't have all the information on this, but keep in mind, we're not here to attack and kill. There's a reason for certain things. Probably most of us sitting here today have parasites in us. And so we need to take what I call the terrain approach. If we have a healthy ecosystem, we live all in healthy balance. Just because there might be some what we call pathogens, we don't want to create a sterile environment because that is not sustainable for life. Unfortunately, the past few years have led us to believe that we need to sterilize everything. And that's actually not a good thing because we have beneficial microbes on our skin, in our gut, in our mouth, all over, on our eyes, eyelashes. We don't want to take the like track and kill approach because it can lead to more inflammation and balance down the road. We want to ask, well, why are those parasites there? Now, there can be valid reasons, right? Like a puppy was born with parasites and we need to deworm. Um, if we are using and we're seeing a high burden of parasites passing like roundworms, there, there is a time and a place to use dewormers. I am not against that. Um, but we also need to make sure that we're healing leaky gut or uncovering why are these parasites, if they keep coming back, why are they coming back? Are there heavy metals? Parasites love heavy metals. So if you haven't done a hair tissue test, I would do a hair tissue test. I would do an innovative pet lab test. Do we have a a problem with the local immune system in the gut lining. This is where Innovative Pet Lab looks at the secretory IgA. If we're super deficient and low on that, the body can't actually mount a proper immune response. And there's a lot of great supplements we can use, things like colostrum that are going to naturally increase your secretory IgA to help your dog bind to, remove toxins, parasites, deactivate them, allow them to pass through because we're constantly exposed to these things. But when we have a healthy ecosystem in the gut, the gut lining, a well-balanced immune system that's not overreacting, this is where we just, it just passes right through. It doesn't aggravate us or cause diarrhea. Um, so looking at that, this is also where too, I'd be using your binders. And if you really want to use something like natural for breaking apart parasites, you can definitely use digestive enzymes away, away from food. If you use digestive enzymes with food, it will break down the food which is beneficial for a lot of dogs, especially older dogs. But if you're specifically using it to break down parasites, make sure you're using digestive enzymes away from the food um, so it actually works on the parasites and then support the healthy ecosystem. So I hope that helps a little bit. All right, Sarah, how do we know if we have a good product? Oh boy, it's like supplements. Um, so <laughs> this is this is actually like a 30 minute talk that I did recently at the Natural Pet Doctor, um, my YouTube channel. I highly recommend looking at how to assess supplements. Um, if you if you don't follow me on YouTube, 
Um, yes, I am plugging that because I specifically did a coffee talk on this um, and a presentation. This is a huge problem in this industry. It is unregulated and it is more unregulated than the human food industry and supplement industry, which is quite scary. So there, anyone and everyone can be making supplements and they're not doing anything or they can have other things in them that are potentially harming or hurting our pets long term. Um, so there are a lot of factors that come into it. I do recommend watching that free resource um, because there is a PowerPoint presentation where you can take notes and all of that. So I hope that helps. All right. Yesterday at the kickoff meeting, it was mentioned that gently cooked fresh food was better than raw food. Could you explain why and what gently cooked would mean boiled? Thank you. Okay. Here's where we all have different opinions. <laughs> so... Welcome to the beauty of working with different practitioners. Now, as I mentioned, so Dr. Susan mentioned Gently Cooked. Um, so she also works with a lot of pets that have sensitivities um, or GI issues. And so this is where, as I mentioned previously, your Gently Cooked is going to help. Um, it is more warming. It's broken down a little bit more. It's easier to digest. So raw food diets, there are who here just drop, let's do, let's do the number three, drop in the comments. If your pet, if your dog, even if a cat, cats are included in this, if you have a cat has done really well with a raw food diet, just drop a three, drop the number three in the comments. If that's your situation, because I've personally been there with my own cat. So years ago, when we rescued my Moki, who has cerebellar hypoplasia as a kitten, he had severe GI health issues. I see you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Debbie, Dee, Dee Paula. Uh, look at, there's so many, right? They can be helpful. This is where pets are individuals. My own kitten came to me on a prescription food at eight weeks old, multiple rounds of antibiotics, diarrhea spewing out his back end. I immediately transitioned him to a raw food diet because I was there to monitor him. Um, that's not necessarily how I work with clients. It can work, but he has solid stool. His stool is perfect. It's normal. And that was years ago. So a raw food diet can be very beneficial for older pets. It might be too cooling. And this is where you can play around. My big thing for every single pet here is that we are using minimally processed diets. If we can get away from highly processed diets like kibble, it will support your dog's gut health. It will support your cat's gut health. I know this is a dog gut health summit, but this is really, really important. And so yes, like Susan, but he stopped eating it after eight months. If you're noticing they're not wanting to eat it, double check the company that you're using. But also, too, use a lightly cooked option because they might be telling us something. And also, too, through the seasonal changes, we're in wintertime here in Colorado. Sometimes we need, to we need to use more warming foods for those seasonal changes. This is where, like, salads aren't as good right now to me. The more warming foods, the nourishing foods are going to work more better with the energetic side when we're tapping into the power of food therapy. So keep that in mind. Every pet is different. Um, there will be extremes on both ends uh, where some people are like raw only. And then some people will be like kibble only. And the magic's in the middle. And the magic in the middle means that your pet is an individual and assessing what works best for them. What do they feel best on? What do they eat with gusto and they enjoy? And it can change and we change with them. So I have a variety of diets in my household that I rotate through for once. One, once again, variety is key. Um, so, and I, I modify it for my animals based on seasons, based on how they look, how they're feeling, how they're doing. So I know that's not a direct answer, but that's how I approach it for my own pets and with my patients. All right, let's do another question. Tiny dragon, how much slippery elm do you suggest to give to dogs with a gut problem? What do you suggest to give to dogs with itchy skin? So itchy skin to kind of work backwards is the gut health problem usually. We need to heal leaky gut. We also need to make sure that there's not a copper toxicity and we need to make sure there's not a heavy metal issue. Both of those I can find with a hair tissue mineral analysis test and they both look like allergies and it's not an allergy issue. I also want you to watch my presentation on skin issues that are related to gut health because there are a lot of deficiencies, also omega-3 deficiencies, other problems that can mimic allergies and it's not a true allergy. It's that we're actually lacking certain vitamins and minerals that are now showing as a symptom of allergy, but if we treat it like an allergy, we're throwing the wrong things at it and you get nowhere. 
really, really important. Uh, with Slippery Elm, in terms of your Slippery Elm dosages, I just recommend using some of the pet products. Um, there's also a dosages based on weight um, on, on some of our blog posts online that you can definitely check out their free resources. Um, once again, you're not going to overdose them on Slippery Elm. So keep that in mind. It's super safe. So using si like simply a, a quarter of a teaspoon mixed in with a cup of water for a small dog, giving that a couple times a day, depending on what's going on, and then working your way up um, to like a tablespoon. Um, so you're using more for a bigger dog is typically how I titrate up. All right, next question. My Yorkie Life. When the FMT donor has a healthy, diverse microbiome, does it matter if he was kibble fed or raw fed? The raw FMT is more expensive. Trying to do many things, need to budget, need to choose well. This is a great question. Um, and it's a question that a lot of my clients have too, because they are feeding a raw fed diet. Now, technically from Animal Biome, it says, they say that it shouldn't matter. I personally have seen some pets that potentially react. Now, here's the flip side to this too. I always say, whatever you're using, I want the like pet parent to be comfortable giving it because I want you to think about your energy. If we're giving something to our pet and I'm thinking, Ooh, this is going to create a problem. This is going to cause a problem. We're going to have like GI upset. This is going to like create an ear issue or like they always flare up. What? And this is a bit of woo woo. So just bear with me a little bit. What do you think the energy that I just put into that supplement or that food is going to be like? Is that a healing energy or is that something where it's like, uh oh, like I'm putting that energy into this and now it's going into my pet. And I can tell you nine times out of 10, when we come at it like that, we end up seeing a symptom or side effect. So I always say in this situation, if you're like, I don't know, it's like kibble fed. I've read some things like some people have had upset like guts from this. I wouldn't use the kibble fed. FMT capsule for that very reason, because it's going to create more stress in you and your pets feel it. So this is where using the more expensive thing and also blessing the food, blessing the supplement can be really, really powerful. I know that sounds so woo woo, but I see it all the time. And I can actually predict it with a lot of my clients where I'm like, Ooh, don't use that. Don't use that. They use it. They're all stressed out. And then we see a side effect. And I'm like, it makes sense from a science perspective or why we're using these supplements, but keep that in mind. There is a lot more to this than just the physical form. So that's where I taught the whole ecosystem is a key component. So if you're not resonating with something, don't keep using it. Now, there's also the flip side if there's a lot of fear with everything because nothing's worked and we're in that, we're in like the very low valley of despair is what I call it. We need to work through that. We need to do things that are going to build up our confidence again. But this is just another piece. It's like the spiritual side of healing on this journey, especially with pets with chronic health issues. And I can relate 100% because I've been through that with my own non-furry family and there's a lot to it and it is very powerful. So I hope that helps a little bit. All right, next question. Okay, can you add hot water to commercial raw food to warm food up after it's been thawed in the refrigerator but still pretty cold? If so, how hot? Will hot water decrease damage any of the food nutrients? Great question. So you never want to microwave to heat up food. I just wanted to state that um, because that will destroy all the nutrients and that's not helpful. Uh, what I use are warm water baths. So I'll fill my sink with hot water and then I will put the food in like a glass dish and let it sit there until it's to room temperature. You can add hot water also too to bring it to room temperature. Uh, just be a little bit careful if you're using boiling water, things like that. It can, it can potentially affect the vitamins and the minerals in the food, but just using a warm water bath can be really helpful. It takes a bit longer um, there's patience with that. It's not as simple as pouring kibble into a bowl. Uh, you know, it's not as convenient. Um, but that's typically what I recommend and what I use. Next question. Okay. Advantage or not to fecal analysis like Innovative Pet Lab as opposed to blood work like Texas A&M GI panel? They're looking at different things. So all these tests that I recommended, they all have a different place for putting together puzzle pieces. So your innovative pet lab test is a stool test. It's going to look at different things. So we're looking at 
your calprotectin. We're looking at your secretory IgA. We're looking at how well your pancreatic elastase, how well are they digesting the food? So we're looking at very different things. And then your Texas A&M GI panel is going to look at your B, B vitamins, your folate. So you're, it's going to look at your TLI. It's going to look for, you know, it's looking at other markers. So if you can, the more information and data that you have, it makes it easier to figure out what you need to focus on and what is not an issue at that time. I find a lot of pet parents are using things like B12 and B vitamins and they're in excess and we don't need them. We could remove that. You don't need to waste money on that. They're okay. But if we, we have chronic inflammation or we need to support like the local gut immune system, there are certain things that we can use. So you're not guessing. So yes, these tests can be more costly up front but they're also going to reduce the potentially reduce the amount of supplements and other things that you use over time because you're just guessing and hoping that it works. So if you can do the test, I'm a big fan of testing. I understand that not every pet parent can do all those tests. And that's where also too making sure you're following frameworks, you're keeping a journal is really important too, so that you know how your pet is responding, because it is really hard to get to the end of the week and go, you know, I'm going to remember how they felt, I promise you. And you get to the end of the week after a busy long week, you're stressed and tired. And you're like, I don't even remember what I fed yesterday. So keeping a journal is really, really powerful. I love when the pet parents I work with have journals. I'm like, fantastic. We know trends. We can see seasonal trends. We can see when stressors in your life potentially flare things up too. Because once again, we all deal with stress. So do I. And it's really helpful when we can pick up on patterns. And then we know when to better support our pets. So I think that helps. Or I hope that helps. All right. There are so many questions. Let's take this last question and then we'll round it out. Um, talking about what's in store next for tomorrow. All right, how can I get a traditional Chinese medicine diagnosis for my dog? There are a lot of great free resources. Dr. Judy Morgan has some great free pet constitution quizzes on her website, drjudymorgan.com. Highly recommend looking into that. She also has like a yin and yang uh, cookbook that you can buy on Amazon. Um, if you want to get more into fresh feeding for your, for your pets, um, so definitely check those out. Also, too, you can go to the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association, so ahvma.org, and you can actually search based on modality. So if you want to partner with a veterinarian who's trained in Chinese medicine, you would click like Chinese medicine, and it'll bring up veterinarians in your area, or you can leave the zip code off. There's not a lot of us, but a lot of myself, like myself and colleagues work with uh, pet parents through either telehealth or through online programs and things like that to help guide you. So I definitely recommend taking a look at those resources. Awesome. For everyone here, I know there's so many questions. Uh, definitely write down your questions, bring them. We have three more days of our Gut Health Summit. Who is excited? Drop me a 10 <laughs> if you're excited for the next couple of days. The special guest joining me on Wednesday and some fun things coming up for everyone. I just wanted to say tomorrow is all about microbiome, the gut microbiome. And Dr. Connor Brady is going to be talking about what's an optimal diet for dogs. I love you guys. Look at all those tens. So excited. Dr. Christina Chambro is going to talk about toxic effects of glyphosate on the microbiome. This is a big one. This is a huge one that's near and dear to my heart. I lost my German shepherd, my soul dog, Finn, to a brain tumor. And glyphosate, I can't say it caused it, but it it's, it's, it weighs on my heart. So this is a big one. Dr. Margaret Roman's going to talk about the microbiome restorative therapy. We talked a little bit about fecal gut restore. So she's going to go into how that supports the healing process. Dr. Betsy Redman with Innovative Pet Lab is going to talk beyond the microbiome, what's happening in the gut. So you're going to learn a lot about what I talked about with those testings, when you would use it, what it actually means, how you can like that transformative power of having more information to better understand what's going on inside your dog's gut. And then finishing out with Dr. Gary Richter, he's going to talk about what are the risks to dogs that don't have a healthy gut microbiome. So I want to leave you thinking about we are all on a spectrum of health, including our dogs. We have optimal health here. We have disease down here. 
every choice we make, every decision you make, we're constantly moving along the spectrum. Just because we don't have symptoms doesn't mean something's not going on internally. And this is why this information is so powerful and so important for every single pet parent here. Because when you understand we can do better, we can be more proactive and we can support our pets, especially your dogs, if they are going through a gut health problem or something that's related to a gut health problem. Once again, I want to thank our sponsors again. Make sure you check them out. She Dog, Fair Pet Organics, and Innovative Pet Lab. They are amazing. Please share this information and the links for with your friends. Any person who has a dog and even cat people, because a lot of this applies to kitties too. I treat a lot of cats. Share it with them. It's important. And I didn't know this as a young veterinarian and I had to learn the hard way. And I know so many pet parents share that story that are here. And if we can help expand this knowledge and the information and spread it so that we can help support our pets and heal those root causes at a gut health level level. We are all in a much better place. Um, so I appreciate everyone here. I hope to see you the next few nights. I hope you decide to join me. I value your time. Thank you for learning. Um, share this information. Spread it worldwide. Together, we can be the change we wish to see. And thank you so much. I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, and I will see you all again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. You'll have those links in your email. And I look forward to hearing what you're your takeaways for talk day two and all the talks that are coming at you, what they are. See you guys soon.